Hey folks, it's Maxi here and welcome to another TW 2020 video. We've had a few filler events in the last couple of months, but we are now here for one of the big main four pay-per-views in AEW. We're here for Double or Nothing 2024. This will be my third Double or Nothing since the save started it all out in 2021. We have quite a standard to meet. Double or Nothing in 2022, just before a year of the in-game save, was a 90. That was main evented with Hangman winning the World Championship from Kenny in our main event which gathered a 91 and then last year with an 87 which saw Eddie Kingston pick up the win over Hangman for the belt in front of 72,000. I don't think we're going to have as much in attendance here purely because of the fact that industry is it's probably its lowest. Things like both the um, wrestling industry and the economy are both in single digits in the US, uh, Canada's not much better so there's not much chance of going there. But overall I'm looking forward to it, it should be a good event, a lot of stuff very storyline orientated so a lot of stuff I'll explain as we go along because they've been booked on Rampages and Dynamite. And we're going to be on the Dish Network, main event is Shaw Direct. So without further ado, I think we should just crack on it. This is Double or Nothing 2024. Let's do this. So we're straight into the show in front of 65,284 people at the M&T Bank Stadium. We are straight in with, yeah, a bit of a shock, a bit of a surprise that we're only getting a 78. Because I was just going to have hype to the show and we go straight to an MJF vignette promo. Basically talking about his match with the newest acquisition to AW John Cena. And I'm basically saying he's everything that's been wrong with wrestling. He's going to show that MGF is the way forward. He's going to end Big Match John and his first out in here in AEW to show he is the best wrestler in the world. He's the best sports entertainer in the world. And he is a global phenomenon. So, one only, only got a 78. I generally thought this would take 100, so I didn't even bother with any hype entertainment packages. So, we're under pressure right from the off, angle wise. But that match obviously will be later on. I was quite tempted to make it the main event, but I think it is the second or third last match of the card with the world title match, your main event. But we start off with a matchup for the AEW TNT Championship, and it was a ladder match. It was a good matchup. The champion Keith Lee defends and retains against the likes of Swerve Strickland, Darby Allen, Claudio from the Danielson Dojo, and Pac in 1340 when Keith Lee retrieved the item. First defence of the belt, I felt a multi-man ladder match for the belt was a good idea at the pay-per-view. 82, some stellar performances in there and a good start to the glorious reign of Keith Lee. And after that he celebrates, we bask in his glory and he gives us our top segment of an 80. We then move on to the TBS Championship and of course that recent turn by Thunder Rosa after her defeat to Cassie Lee sees the rematch here and in the rematch Thunder Rosa picks up the win in 10.59 with La Rosa. Thunder Rosa becomes the TBS champion for the second time in a 69 rated matchup. My reason for this one, I just feel like the Cassie Lee character wasn't particularly getting over. The in-ring stuff was okay but I just felt like I've got such a stacked division that this belt needs to be a kind of workhorse belt and I feel like I could have Thunder Rosa in there, I can have Tony Storm. There's so many women I can have in there that maybe just don't have the overness for the main title at this moment in time. So Rosa picks up the one in the second matchup. We then have a matchup for the IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship. And I felt like these two have had a bit of a tangle on Rampage and it gave me a good opportunity to use the Alliance belt. And it was about to have superb wrestling and great heat as Andrade Alidolo defeated Hangman Adam Page in 1823 with the Brilliante driver due to interference from Wendy the Clown. Andrade Alidolo makes defence number two of the IWGP US title. It scores a very respectable 89. In fact, I think these two could probably push and probably even an 83-94 should one of them get the psychology stat to where I need it to be, but that's fantastic from those two, I actually surpassed the expectations, I didn't realise they'd have the great chemistry, but they just need that wee, I think Andrade's is 80, and Hangman's is 79, so a wee bit better psychology, and of course we're just changing the gimmick, 
as Wendy becomes a clown. So initial rating is great and the rating is likely to rise over time as fans get used to it. Perfect. It sounds stupid but I'm just trying to more from an air doink like character. So we've got Hangman versus Wendy the Clown going forward. We had a little feud here that started the last couple of weeks on Rampage where we were just a little back and forth between Kevin Steen with Proud and Powerful who had been out of action for a wee while. Of course, Kevin Steen's got his good friend Sami Zayn and this led to a few matches, a few brawls backstage on Rampage and gave us this pretty good tag team matchup. It was about their good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Kevin Steen and Sami Zayn pick up the win over Proud and Powerful in 18-12 when Sami pinned Ortiz with a brain buster. 79 kilo they were at 90, which is exceptional. He's actually really over. The problem with Steen and Zayn at times though is they've just been too kind in putting people over, with putting in promises to put people over. But I feel we're not too far off a Kevin Steen singles run and really looking forward to that one. Zayn had developed up a little bit, which is why we gave him the victory here, but I do expect them to, to split up pretty soon. This was just an alliance to tackle a common cause. Then moved on to the AEW Women's World Championship matchup, and I was actually struggling for an opponent for Demi Bennett, but I feel like Becky Quinn was probably best equipped for it. And it was a superb matchup with Demi picking up the win over Becky in 21 34 by using a foreign object. Fourth, uh, fourth defence of the Women's World title, and a very respectable 77 rated matchup, an 85 earning performance. She's really knocking out of the park as Women's Champion. We then had an elaborate over the top entrance for two of our more glamoured superstars on the roster, or wrestlers on the roster since we're AEW. There's of course Jade Cargo and Charlotte who make an over the top elaborate entrance. Charlotte came across as a real star in this 79 segment and they were defending their championship belts in a elimination matchup for teams to see who would become the AEW Women's World Tag Team Champions. It was a decent matchup and Jade Cargo and Charlotte defeat the Sisters of Sin, Elena Black and Serena Knight, the team of Jamie Hayter and Chris Statlander, and representing stardom AZM and Gulia in 13 39. AZM and Gulia went first, then the Sisters of Sin before Hayter and Chris Statlander. So overall, it was a fourth defence of the World Championships for Jade Cargill and Charlotte. Wasn't quite ready to take them off from just yet. A 71 overall, some good performances in there as you can see. Uh, just obviously the two ladies from Stardom, not the best because of the zero chemistry and of course we need to work on getting them over in the US. But that's the plan, I'm going to be loaning a lot of women from Stardom just to try and either make them too popular for Stardom or just to really give myself as many options in a stacked women's division that we can. Because we've already done it with Starlight Kids, she's already I think just low 50s, maybe high 40s in terms of overness in the US, so she's going to be sold in popularity in Japan. A few words in from Hangman, he just says it's son, he knows he's doesn't know what the problem is with Wendy the Clown, but yeah, no clown's going to get into his business, this clown's going to suffer some cowboy shit down the line. I'll see him in Rampage next week. 81, just him reflecting on that earlier on. 81. We then had the matchup for the Lucha Underground Championship. This is between two heels, but ever since Penta defeated Kana for the Gift of the Gods Championship, he has defended it three times, which allows him to have his matchup for the belt. He will retain that championship belt unless he wins here. But it was about the had good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd. Garza Jr. defeats Penta at 0M in 1427 by two falls to one after losing the first fall the final fall happening with a wing clipper. Garza Jr. makes the second defence of the Lucha Underground Championship. So you retain that. Uh, Penta will need to defend his belt weekly for the next three weeks to get an opportunity going forward. Until then Garza Jr. will retain the Lucha Underground Championship. In a little backstage segment it was just a kind of like fist bump and making sure everyone's on the same page between Kenny Omega and the Hardys. This was an 80 rated segment. The reason for this one is obviously Kenny has had issues with Malachi Black, Buddy Matthews, and Brody King, the House of Black. So, the Hardys, they had the 3 on 2 beatdown following a matchup between the Hardys, Buddy Matthews, and Brody King. 
So what made sense. There's your six man tag. And we'll see how that one goes down. 82, pretty solid I think. Decent matchup, Kenny and the Hardys defeat Malachi Black, Buddy Matthews and Brody King. And it's 16-15 when Kenny pinned Buddy Matthews with a one-winged angel. Kenny then 97. Oh, Kenny, I need to get back in that main event scene. He's knocking out the park here. 82. Performance really stood out. Weakest link there was Brody King and Matt Hardy. But I feel we've done this justice in terms of storylines. And uh, we'll need to watch what we do with Kenny in the next few months heading in to All Out. But good match up there. Could those Cheers Championships be ready to debut soon? They're there. It's just about the right time. Speaking of championships and tournaments, we had the Owen, the women's section. It concludes with both group winners being Hikaru Shida and Misaruga. And it was a decent matchup that saw Misaruga defeating Hikaru Shida in 13-38 with the dropkick. She wins the Owen. A 72 here, both ladies with a 70 performance. Might be looking to go with Misaruga versus Demi Bennett in the future. But that was pretty solid. And then she has a celebration, which gives us a 78. So she is fairly over, which is good to see. We then had John Cena making his elaborate entrance. The crowd are like, oh my god, it's John Cena. Somehow only a 78, but he was a real star in this segment. He's getting better. He's gimmick. And him and MGF pull off a classic. Exceptional matchup. MGF defeats John Cena in 1346 by illegally using the ropes for leverage. This gathered a 90. 88 for Cena and 91 for MGF. So Cena's obviously got stamina issues, so we'll have to go under the 15 minute mark with that, which is fair enough. But I felt like Cena's got great psychology starting this. MGF is probably the one stat letting him down. So I felt working with Cena keeps his over this high and can help him develop there. But that's a great result from those two. And MGF is something he can brag about going forward. We then had the Owen from the men's side, and it was the two group winners. So the two brand winners, after they won their groups, then won the final matches from their prospective brands with Tyler Black. Uh, who did Tyler Black even face in the final Jungle Boy in the Dynamite section? And Wheeler Utah defeated Jay Lethal. But it was about they had good heat and decent wrestling, and Tyler Black picks up the win over Wheeler Utah in 1434 using the curb stomp. So Tyler Black wins it, 76. We are, we are, we're still working and getting over, but slowly but surely that's happening. And Tyler Black hopefully can break in to main event contention. He celebrates, not only gives us a 79. So we're low 80s in terms of our best angle, which is worrying. We really need the match and the boosts to help the overall show. I believe it's main event time. I forget, we've got the Zero X Championship. There's always one you forget about. Rey Mysterio cuts a promo on Sammy Guevara, 84. Uh, that's our highest promo of the night. Uh, good stuff between these two. Sammy and Ray had a matchup on Dynamite. Sammy, just a non title matchup. Ray picked up the win, DQ basically. And based, just put us together as a matchup. I wanted to have basically the future of high flying wrestling against a legend. Makes simple. Case in point with those two, this could maybe score a really high rate. Even boosted by the surprise great chemistry that I completely forgot about. But a uh, superb matchup, Sammy Guevara defeats Rey Mysterio in 11.56 with a 6.30. Sammy Guevara makes the first defence of the Zero X Championship, that's going to do wonders for that prestige. Maybe we should maybe have it the opener rather than second last match in the card. But it just shows, like, maybe I'm putting the emphasis on too many long matches to have a great match. When it shows here, 12 minutes, regular matchup, two guys that just click together, put on a pretty solid matchup. Now we've got the main event. I don't know if I've got any angles beforehand or if I go straight in it. So we'll build a little bit of suspense just in case. And we're straight in it. We had an exceptional matchup for the AEW World Championship and it saw the champion, Adam Cole Baby, defeat Brian Danielson and Cody Rhodes in 34-27 when Adam Cole pinned Cody Rhodes with a flying crossbody. 
Adam Cole gets his second defence of the belt. 90 rated matchup, so even though I had a bit of time, that went well with the three of them conducting it. I feel Cody's still working on psychology. Brian's obviously got that nailed, and Cole's in that kind of hangman threshold of not quite there, but close to having the start to have a good lengthy matchup. But at a 90, Cody bringing a 91 despite being off his game is good. And yeah, pretty likely with that. Any negatives? Just Cody's inconsistency, everything else seemed to do quite well. And we finish the show with a future challenger making his intentions known. The winner of the Owen, Tyler Black, decides to beat down the champion and then stand with the championship belt. I wonder which direction we're going in heading towards Fight for the Fallen and Fighter Fest. I'll need to check which way about it is. But Adam Cole versus Tyler Black looks to be on the agenda. So the show itself actually scores a very, very sensational 95, which increased our popularity in 25 regions. We obviously had the fantastic main event, co-main event, and the Cena MGF match. We never really had the angle, so I actually wonder if we had the angle, could we have pushed a 97 or a 98? But the boost certainly done it, maybe the prestige of the event did. But a 95 for Bubble or Nothing is certainly what we'll take. I was a bit worried we wouldn't surpass the last couple of years. But we absolutely have. But a stellar show. It kind of gives you just an idea of like how good we're doing. And uh, that's with a lot of big names still missing from the card. No Miro, no CM Punk, just to name two. Uh, it's just finding plans for people. But I feel like not using them all the time gives us an opportunity to rest people. A few other announcements to make. Uh, we had signed uh, Trinity Fatu, aka Naomi to uh, basically fill the void missed by G Fatu so we could start a mixed match mixed championship division. Literally the day after our contract signed uh Saraya, Knight and John so or John Fatu had an affair. So uh, just to keep everyone happy I had to terminate the contract of Trinity. So she will not be joining. Uh, she's already a free agent and uh, we'll still be together. We also had a very nasty injury to Chelsea Green on, I believe it was on the women's show, but she's going to be out for over a year. Complications and the surgery is not ideal. In fact, we'll just jump to that before we come back and touch to the news here. So you can see she's going to be out for a year and two weeks. Chief Atty will be back in 28 days. I decided for some unknown reason to furiously test my full roster. And that has saw the likes of Jiro, Julia Hart and Mustafa all have to check into rehab for steroid abuse or drug problems. We only gave so, uh, kind of like slap on wrist for people who are dealing with soft drugs. So your Matt Riddles etc. As you would expect in MSK. So we kept them. But uh, maybe I'll set up the locker room a little bit. But it wasn't as many as I thought it was. I think it was like 8 incidents overall. Uh, but 3 have to go with that. Brittany Blake get injured working elsewhere. Thatcher's been the whole time. Whether we even get to use Thatcher depends how he is when he comes back. We've also seen by Bad Luck Fally. He's just gonna try and unleash something within a wrestler that's not really done much. So CM Punk and Dax Harwood had a little bit of an argument as they criticised a matchup. So they do have a simmering tension. It's a bit of a shame. Double or nothing. Feedback's been incredible. Show was a complete success. Good to see. So Sarah Del Rey is going to retire in three months time. So if we just go to our news, you can see here she came out of retirement. That's two years. That's not too bad then. She came out of retirement two years ago. So she is going to be retired again. Uh, also in the retirement is going to see Christian Cage, he's going to see Sting. We had Scott Steiner suffer a drug death. We also saw a death of Terry Funk. We saw Ric Flair retire. So quite a lot of things have happened. Arn Anderson retired from the business completely. So a lot of things have happened in terms of incidents. That's all I can remember off the top of my head. But it does mean we are going to see, in certain cases, uh, a wee changing in the guard. But it's good to get these older people in though, especially getting Sarah Del Rey in. 
that 86 psychologist that was needed just to help with development of some of them. What you'll probably see if we just done um, all our AW matches, you'd be lucky if she won any. We are four wins and nine losses, so she wasn't used a lot, but it was mostly to put people over and just kind of help with her development. Tycon, Amy Segura, Dira Perazzo, just to name a few. Stardom heel turn for Starlight Kid. Well, your baby face here, but I wonder if that means she'll be heel here. Because obviously she's on a loan and been utilising her as a heel, but if we just go to her scale, uh, the popularity even, you can see she was 21 over, then 27 over in the US, and now 48. So we've really been pushing her, and that's obviously going to have a knock on effect in Japan, where she was like 50 over, up to 58s. And she's in the 70s, so she's not going to be a cheap contract for stardom. So she may, the way we're looking at it, she may become too big for them. She may want, want they may not be able to afford her going forward. And that's when, if she becomes a free agent, we can maybe swoop in and steal her in a permanent deal, because she is only 24. But I want to try that method and see if it works. Uh, anything else that directly affects us? And Helico's back from injury. CMLL are letting go of. Kuka, uh, I think that seems to be it. Uh, Nakajima new contract, she is only working on A events and TV shows, but just with her psychology, I'll get her up there. Uh, this is one of her developmental talents, so I think it's TDF for you. And Kota, you made that, it's a 75% increase. Dan Housen and Bear Bronson expected the same new contracts. Sarah Del Rey, we know about uh, our contracts ending as well in a month, so what I'll do. It's actually the same as I've done with um, Madison Eagles, whose contract was about to expire. Is offer them a new one and just be exclusively a road agent. So they'll be under the books and they'll just be road agent. And it makes my roster look not as big. And, well, as, as bloated as it is. Kitty Marshall changes body type. Tanahashi, Takahashi even is a comedy wrestler. Blah, blah, blah. Jade Cargill says that Chris says Jade Cargill is already one of her main over people giving us feedback. I know the psychology sounds crazy that she's at 75, but honestly, that skill set has been absolutely developed by her mentor, QT Marshall. It's one of the good things about having mentors in this game. Uh, probably Chris is. Popularity, it's not that. Seems to peak at 71. I did obviously job her out a little bit in that tournament, but I just feel like I just can't get her to break that 71. But I've seen a few wrestlers recently look like they've been pop capped and they've kind of broke it a little bit, so maybe it just needs the right feud to help it happen. We had just under a million viewers and a buy rate of 1.98. That may be one of our worst buy rates actually. To be fair, I probably had one of my worst shows ever on Rampage with a 57, just purely because I wanted to rest everyone and only about two angles because it was late at night. My bad, but I, and I kind of rushed through it, but uh, I wanted to get here, so yeah, not great. TV rating was terrible considering the Rampage before 26.26. They are down, but I think that's down to the industry as well. I started doing dark as well, but it's just basically getting people into a positive momentum. So last thing we'll cover before we finish up for the day is your top 100s. So 98 is still our best show and Double or Nothing comes in at number 7. So with a dollar out Grand Slam, the 24 hour extravaganza, full gear, the anniversary show, winter is coming and then Double or Nothing. Uh, top 100 matches, so that we'll see. MGF and Cena in at 21. And that triple threat match was a 90 as well, wasn't it? We had quite a few 90s, that's the problem. Yeah, that's it at 28. So I had mine a good match, just uh, not quite there. Oh, that's right, actually, I forgot about that. I done a Kenny vs. Sammy match like on Dynamite just recently to set up. Uh, obviously, Sammy being a bit lower on the card, uh, they came up with a 98, so. <laughs> I'm really intrigued to see if I can get Sammy back over, Kenny in full swing, if I could maybe reach that 100 match with those two. But I don't even think that match went that long. I don't know if I can check it. Uh, it was just, it was a good home show for that. 
Three of them they wrestled for. Twenty one, twenty thirty five, ninety eight between Kerry and Sami. And if we go back to the top one hundred, so the attendances. And at fifteen for that. And your buy rate slots in at number six. So a wee bit down. But uh, hopefully we can pick it back up. We need obviously your back in business with the UK because I'd kept missing out Skybox office, so that's why they were unhappy with us. But that's it for this particular episode. We're on to Fighter Fest now, so I'll go and look towards that. And then hopefully you join us for Fighter Fest for Fight for the Fallen and maybe another event in there before we get it all out. But cheers as always for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Check out the Fancy Booker subreddit, the Great Dog Software forums, and until next time, Maxwell, see you soon. Bye bye.